Hello and welcome back to the channel on our continuing voyage to become better blues players. My name's Mark and in this video we're going to cover all of the music theory that you need to know in order to be able to play blues. We're not going in a massive deep dive with this, we're just covering the absolute essentials that you need to know in order to understand blues and what's going on from a music theory point of view. The idea is I'm going to take about 12 minutes or so of this video, hopefully a little bit less, to just cover all the essentials. So after watching this video for about 12 minutes, you should know all you ever need to know. Of course, if you want to take a deeper dive, you absolutely can do that and I will have more videos on the channel talking about that. Okay, also there is a PDF available which has all of the theory, all of the charts and everything else that I'm going to go through in this lesson. Okay, and that's available, stay to the end and I'll tell you how you can get a free copy of that. Okay, so what we're going to cover before our 12 minute counter actually starts, I'll just tell you what we're going to cover. We're going to be covering the major scale, we're going to be talking about how chords are made up, how you find the different chords in a particular key, different types of chords and flavours of them. We're going to be talking about the chords in a 12 bar blues and where they come from and then the scales that a blues player would, play, would use to play over them um, to appreciate the underlying harmony. And then what we're going to do is finally we're going to talk a little bit specific about the theory for the minor blues, okay? So roughly 12 minutes, hopefully a little bit less. Um, let's go. Music theory for blues guitarists. So we're going to start with the major scale, and that's because everything in music is based off the major scale. You need to know it. Now, if you're of a certain vintage like I am, you will remember at Christmas time and Easter and things on the TV every year there was the sound of music, and um, Julie Andrews would be there singing "Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do." That is the major scale. That was my first ever introduction to the major scale. Now. The easiest way to think of the major scale is if we think of the key of C, in the key of C, in C major, there are no sharps, no flats. If you're looking at a piano, it'd be all the white keys, none of the black ones. Okay, so very simply, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, really simple to remember, you now know the C major scale. Okay, but as blues guitar players, we never play the major scale, but we have to understand it because we need to be able to talk to other musicians and everything it revolves around that major scale. That's kind of like our language. So if we look at the major scale I've got on screen here, you'll see that the seventh um, note in the scale is a B. Now often we'll talk to other musicians and we'll say, well, we need to play the flat seven. Well, what does that mean? Well, it simply means you take the seventh and you make it, you, you uh, decrease it by a semitone by one fret. You make it flat. So in this case, if somebody asks us to play a flat seven and we're playing in C, we play a B flat. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, so now we understand the major scale. The next thing to look at is how chords are made up. So what we've, um, what I'm going to be talking about is what we call the extended form of a chord. So in its simplest form, a chord is three notes. But we're actually going to be talking about a four note chord at in its extended format. So in C, you might have the, the chord of C major, which is made up of three notes, C, E, and G. But actually, I'm going to be talking about C major seven, which is made up, which adds that extra note, the, uh, the, four, uh, the, the, the seven. So you've got C, E, G, and B. Okay, so that's what we're mainly going to be talking about here. Now, where do we get those from? Well, it's quite simple. What we do is every chord is made up of the first, the third, and the fifth, and can be extended by adding the seventh. So in the key of C, our first is C, our third is E, our fifth is G, and then we can extend that by adding the seventh, which is a B. So if we play the notes of C, E, G, and B together, we get the chord of C major seven. Now notice what we've done here, actually. We've started at our first note, and we've taken the first note, and we've skipped the second. We've taken the third and skipped the fourth. Taken the fifth, skipped the sixth. Taken the seventh. Okay, so we're kind of taking alternate notes in the scale. That's an important concept. Because if we then do the same thing, but starting on the D note, we take the D, skip the E, take the F, skip the G, etc. We come up with D, F, A, and C, which gives us a D minor seven chord. Do the same starting on the E, and we get E, G, B, and D, which is an E minor seven. Do the same on an F, we get F, A, C, and E, which gives us an F major seven. Do the same starting on the G, 
G, B, D and F gives us a G7 or a G dominant chord. On the A we get A, C, E and G which gives us an A minor 7. And finally doing this starting on the B gives us B, D, F and A which is a B minor 7 flat 5. Not a chord we play very often but one we need to at least know a little bit about. But that's, uh, that's all the chords that are made up by taking the notes of the C major scale, okay? So all of these chords, they all work really, really well together. That particular combination of chords or any subset of it will sound really nice and harmonious together because they're all in the same key. Okay, so having looked at how chords are made up, let's have a little slightly deeper dive at, how, uh, at the three particular types of chord. So we have a major chord, we have a minor chord, and we have a dominant chord. And dominant chords are often confused with major chords, and we'll see why in a moment. But for a blues player, the dominant chord is arguably the most important type of chord that we need to understand. So the formula for a major chord is we take a one, three, and five, and we can extend that by adding the seventh. For a minor chord, the, for, the formula is one flat three, five, and flat seven. So if we wanted to make a minor chord, we'd need to take the third note and drop it down by a semitone, and take the seventh note and drop that down by a semitone. And for a dominant chord, it's one, three, five, and flat seven. So it's kind of halfway in between major and minor. Now, in its simplest form, one, three, five, it's actually exactly the same as the major chord, and that's the root of much of the confusion around dominant chords. It's only when we add that seventh note, and we notice here it has to be a flattened seventh, that tells us <clears throat> that this is a dominant chord. Okay, let's apply that in the context of C. If we wanted to play a C major chord, we take the one, three, five, and seven, that gives us C, E, G, and B, and there we can see those notes played together give us a C major seven chord. Or if we play the one, three, five, it's just a straight C major chord. We do the same with minor. We take the one, three, five, and the seventh, and we have to flatten the, the third so that the E becomes an E flat, and we have to flatten the seventh so the B becomes a B flat. We play those notes together, and we get, an e, uh, we get a C minor seven. We do the same again for the dominant, this time one, three, five, flat seven, and we get a C, uh, a C dominant seventh chord. Okay, so remember it has C, E, and G just like the major, but it also has that B flat, which tells us that it's dominant. Okay, so we know, we understand the different flavors, the three different flavors of chords. Let's go back now and have a look at the chords in the key of C. Now, if we wanted to apply this to other keys other than just the key of C, we need to look at what the formula of how this is made. So what we can see is that the first chord is a major, second one is minor, third is minor, fourth is major, fifth is dominant, sixth is minor, the seventh is a minor seven flat five. Okay, if we then took that formula and change key, let's say we want to play in G, well what we do is we take the major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, minor seven flat five, but we start counting from G. We'd end up with a G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven, uh, C major seven, etc. as you can see on screen. And that will give us all of, the, all of the chords that work together really nicely. They are all the chords in the key of G major. If we wanted to play in D, we'd simply start from the D point and we, um, we get the same thing. D major, E minor, F sharp minor, etc. And if we even wanted to play in F, same thing. We just take that formula, major, major, minor, sorry, major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, minor seven, flat five. We do that starting at the F chord and we get the chords that you see on screen here. Okay, so now let's put this all in the context of the blues. Let's think of a 12 bar blues in the key of C. What we have is three chords. We have four bars of C7, two bars of F7, two, bar, two more bars of C7, then a bar of G7, a bar of F7, a bar of C7, and a bar of G7. So three chords, C7, F7, and G7, arranged into 12 bars of music. Okay, so which key is that coming from? Which key has a C7, an F7, and a G7? Okay, and it's that question that for years, 
completely confuse me because there isn't a single key that has all of those dominant chords in it. As we could see from our major scale before, each key only has one dominant chord, yet now we're playing a chord progression that's got three dominant chords. So what's really happening here is that we're using the C7 that's taken from the key of F. And we're using um, the F7 that's coming from the, the key of B flat, and we're using the G7 that's coming from the key of C. Now all of that is really confusing because what it actually means is that as we change chord, each time we change chord, we're changing key. And that makes blues really kind of harmonically sophisticated because we're constantly changing, chord, changing key. And if we wanted to play major scales, we'd have to play a different major scale with each chord change. And we don't want to do that because that sounds like way too much work. So fortunately, there is one scale that works perfectly well over all three chords, and that is the minor pentatonic. So if we're playing in the key of C, we're playing a 12 bar blues in the key of C with a C7, an F7, and a G7, we can use the scale of C minor pentatonic. And that's why blues players rely so heavily on the minor pentatonic, because it's that magic scale that fits everything. And I'll show it on screen now, a uh, scale diagram, so you can actually see where that is on guitar. And remember I said at the start, we're not going to play major scales, but we are going to play this one. This becomes really, really important. Now what happens if you want to step beyond that? You want to go beyond that simple minor pentatonic scale. <clears throat> um, we, we can use the C major pentatonic as well, but we have to be really careful with it. It doesn't work over the whole progression. Now, one really interesting quick little tip, if you want to play the C major pentatonic scale without having to learn it, if we look at the notes of the A minor pentatonic scale and the C major pentatonic scale, something magic happens, we notice they're all the same notes, as I'm showing on screen here. So to play C major pentatonic, we actually just use the same um, finger position as we'd use A minor pentatonic. So the rule is that if you want to play the major pentatonic, you simply play the minor pentatonic shape three frets down. Okay, but we can't use that uh, C major pentatonic or A minor pentatonic if you want to think of it that way. We can't use that particular group of notes over the whole chord progression, but we can use them over the C, over the one chord. When we go back to the F7 and G7, we have to go back to that straight C minor pentatonic. Okay, so let's cover, let, let's recap everything we've covered so far. First of all, everything relates to the major scale, but we never actually have to play a major scale, but we do need to understand it in order to communicate with other musicians. Chords are made up from intervals of one, three, five, and seven. Chords come in three flavors, major, minor, and dominant, and dominant is often confused with major. 12 bar blues is sophisticated because it changes key with every chord, but fortunately we can use the minor pentatonic that, because that fits over all of them. Now we can mix the major and minor pentatonic, but only over the one chord. Okay, now with all of that covered, let's very quickly talk about the minor blues because it's um, it has a few kind of um, interesting things about it. So first of all, the minor blues comes in lots of different flavors. So there's lots of different types of, of minor key. You've got, Do you've got Dorian minor, you've got harmonic minor, melodic minor, etc. So when we talk about ma minor, things get a little bit more complicated. And what I'm showing on screen at the moment are some of the more common chord progressions that you would get for a 12 bar blues in a minor key. So if we're playing in C minor, here's a group of different 12 bar blues that we might see. So the important thing here is that the minor pentatonic works really well over all of those chord progressions, over all those different uh, chord changes and key changes and things. But unlike the dominant blues that we talked about before, you never mix major and minor. You can't use the C major pentatonic scale anywhere here. You have to just stick to that minor, that C minor pentatonic. Okay, so the important thing is that we are just staying playing that minor pentatonic when it comes to playing over a minor blues. So if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like a copy of the PDF, please make sure you have liked, commented, and subscribed. And then if you go in the description below, you'll see my email address. Send me an email asking me for the essential music theory for blues guitar players. I will send you 
the PDF back. You're not subscribing to anything, you're not signing up to a mailing list or anything like that. You're simply sending me an email and I'll reply with the PDF attached. Thank you very much to the Patreons and the people who contribute to the PayPal tip jar, which actually pay for the, uh, the lights, the cameras and the everything and the green screen behind me even, um, and make these videos possible. Thank you all, take care and I'll see you again.